classes. This class is for uh, Prope students. OK, so um, everyone that has received an invitation to this platform, to this class, uh, these are those of you who are enrolled in Prope. All right, so um, if you know somebody that should be on the list, or if you're on the list and you know you are in first semester, uh, then you need to check and see which class that you need to be in uh, this first semester. OK, so all Prope students will be taking classes with me uh, from 8 in the morning until 10 o'clock in the morning, taking this class listening and speaking. OK, this is listening and speaking class. It's really two classes. But we're going to merge these two classes, practicing a lot our listening comprehension and our speaking. So I'm going to start right off by speaking a lot in English because, well, that's why we're taking the course, right? And so I want to first explain the platform that we're going to be using today. And I ask a question in the chat. How many of you are familiar with using this platform? How many have used Microsoft Teams and this meeting feature that we're in today? How many of you have used it? If you could respond in the chat, just mention, yes, I've used it. Yes, I'm familiar. No, I've never used it. If you look, uh, there's a little icon that says conversation on the front. Never. OK, Jasmine. Jasmine says never. No, no. OK, so some of you, not me. All right, so it looks like many of you if not, all of you have never used it, which is fine. No problems there. Because we're going to learn how to use it. If I can turn my phone off, I think I get notifications when you guys reply. So that's what you heard in the background. All right, so good. So note you're we're all new to this platform. All right, so the good thing is you found the chat. So, so the chat feature that we're using um this we'll use this a little bit right and in, uh, in the class and great all right thank you for responding guys now if you look at the let, i'm going to share my screen here and see if i can show you what i see because it should be the same thing that you see Right, and let's see if we can get this working. All right, so you should see now my screen, hopefully. And do you see this menu here in the front? Do you guys see this? No. No. All right, let me try again. How about now? Can you see my screen and see this uh, menu here in the front? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. So all of you should see something similar to what I see here on your own screen. OK, yeah. so what you guys just hit here, conversation, you click on this button. You already know this is how you can contribute to the conversation, right? So you can type in a text message and um, we might be using this uh, this semester. Also, you'll see here raising your hand. And if you need to raise your hand and want to say something, that's fine. We're going to be uh, using this platform every day for our classes. And so um, you don't really have to raise your hand if you just want to jump in and say something. I guess it will depend on how many people want to speak at once. OK, so. We may or may not use this, but this is to raise your hand 
if you want to be called on or if you have a question. Um, I want this obviously to be as open and informal and casual as possible because uh, one of our goals this semester, one of the main goals is to have more confidence in speaking, right? So that you're not afraid or shy about speaking, that we're all here to improve our speaking skills, not worrying about making mistakes, but learning from our our mistakes, learning from how we speak and, and just improving. And one of the main things is not to be afraid of speaking. OK, so don't feel that you always have to raise your hand. Just jump in if you need to say something. If we have a, a topic where a lot of people are talking, then I may ask, well, let's raise our hand so each of us has a chance to speak. OK, so uh, but this is a feature in Microsoft Teams for our meetings. Now, this button here that I'm circling, little square with an X, this is to share your screen. And that's what I'm doing now. When it has that little X, that means I'm sharing my screen. If I click there, then I will stop sharing my screen. Now, you may or may not have that feature, and we may or may not use it. It depends on uh, the activity. But you might want to share your screen if we're doing a, a certain t an activity or if you're working in your groups. Now, this button right here, the microphone, this is kind of an important uh, button here because what I'm going to ask everyone to do when you're not speaking, when you're just listening, um, I'm going to ask that you click on the mute button. I'm going to do that now. Right now I've unmuted my mic. All right, so sometimes because I, I'm assuming most of us are at our homes, I know I'm at my home, uh, sometimes we get interruptions if we have brothers or sisters or other family members, maybe they jump in and something's going on and there's a lot of noise in the background, then you may want to mute your mic so that we don't have a lot of background noise during our broadcast, during our class. So I'm going to ask everyone, when you're not speaking, I'm going to ask that you mute your microphone. And then obviously, any time that you want to speak, then unmute your microphone, and then you can join in. OK, this is just to try to eliminate any potential background noise. Now, our class is at 8 o'clock, so I don't know how many people are up and around, moving around, um, but I'm assuming you know, that th this could be uh, a distraction if we have a lot of uh, background noise. OK, so uh, this is how we can turn on and off our microphone. Same way with the camera, right? I'm going to ask that you try to use your camera as much as possible because I want it's nice to see your live faces, right? Um, make sure that if you haven't already to go ahead and upload a picture in your profile in Microsoft 365. Most of you have already done that, and it's great to see all of your lovely faces. If you haven't done so, please upload your picture to your profile. All right, so if you're not using your camera, we at least are able to see your faces. OK, so uh, make sure that you've uploaded your picture to your profile. And then when we're in our class, I would really appreciate all of your video cameras on. Even if your microphone is muted, just seeing your faces, um, I think helps. OK, and I'm going to try to do the same thing. I'm going to try to activate my micro my uh, camera as often as possible. And if we have problems with internet, or if you're having some issues with your connection, right, then maybe you want to turn off your camera. But if you're, if it's not an issue, if it's not a problem, then I would encourage all of you to keep your mic, your video cameras on, and just unmute your mic whenever you want to speak. All right. Hello, Jasmine. I see Jasmine there. Hello. 
So, so, all right. So here we go, guys. This is our the platform. It's pretty easy. If you want to see the participants in the class, if you click on this icon, we see a list of all of you. Looks like we have 36 of you right uh, connected at this time. OK. All right. So this is the platform. This is the the meeting feature. All of you were able to find the meeting. That's that's good. All right. I'm going to go to Microsoft Teams now. Now, this is the platform itself. All of you were able to join the meeting. And every day, I'm going to go to calendar. Every day, we're going to meet at 8 o'clock. OK, so our class meets again from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock. We're actually going to meet from 8 until 940. All right, so since this is two classes, each class typically is 50 minutes. That means we should meet about 100 minutes uh, for both classes. And so for us, again, we're going to start at 8 o'clock in the morning and we'll go until about 940. So you'll have about 20 minutes between 940 and 10 o'clock before your next class. All right. So I usually, if there are no problems with connection or electricity or any of those things, I'm pretty good about starting right at 8 o'clock. I really like to start right at 8 o'clock, and I really like to finish no later than 940. So I will probably get online and open up the meeting and I will probably join the meeting about five minutes before class. You guys can join the meeting at any time you want. Some of you kind of jumped in and out before I joined and that's perfectly fine. That's that's great. If you want to jump in earlier and talk amongst yourselves before class, go right ahead. As you see, I've already scheduled all of the classes. This is for week one, August 24th to August 28th. If I scroll to the next week, there are our classes. All right, so I've scheduled all of our classes for the entire semester online. Okay, I'm assuming we're going to not have face to face classes. Of course, if we change and we're meeting face to face, which I hope, I hope we do soon then things might change, right? But for now, I'm assuming online classes and all of the online classes have been scheduled. Now, make sure that when you're working with your other teachers, right, they may choose something different, okay? They may, you know, so just because I'm doing it this way doesn't mean that all the teachers are doing the same. So, just make sure that you find out what each teacher requires as far as the platform, as far as the technologies, right? Today in our class, we're going to talk about mainly three types of technologies that we're going to be using. And I want to try to make this as simple and as easy for you guys as possible, and for me both, so that the technology doesn't get in the way, that it doesn't become a distraction, all right? So it's really important today, we're going to talk about a lot of things, but I want you to uh, make sure that you ask me questions if you're not, not sure what to do or where to find something. I want you to make sure that you reach out to me and send me uh, a message, all right? And you can send me a chat in Microsoft Teams. If you go into Microsoft Teams chat, this is basically like an email. It's a private chat, although I'm sharing my chat right now with everybody. Uh, these are messages that you can send me and I can send you, but it's a one-to-one -one conversation, right? Just like an email. So if you have questions, and it doesn't matter if you're using your phone to access Microsoft Teams or a computer, feel free to send me a message. Now, you can also send a message in posts, just as it appears here, right? So if you want to send me a message, maybe you think that some of your classmates also 
have the same question or maybe your classmates would benefit from knowing more about the question, then you can post a question here in posts. OK, so if you post here, the whole class, everybody in this team can see your question and they can see my response. So feel free to use this if you want the posts. You can send me messages here or in chat in Microsoft Teams. OK, if you have any questions. All right, so that's posts, that's chat. Let's go up to the next tab here along the top of your screen. These are going to be files that are going to be specific to our class, Listening and Speaking 1. All right, so today we're going to talk about the syllabus. If we go into the class documents, this is where we can find the syllabus. I'll open up this document here in a few minutes. But this is where you can find it. I'm going to leave the syllabus here all semester. So after we talk about it today, you can go in and take a look at that syllabus anytime you want throughout the course. Here's some other documents that we're not going to go into right now, but basically here are the uh, documents for the class. OK, so again, these are documents that can be viewed by the entire team. All right, so this is files. Now, class notebook, assignments, and grades. Do not worry about these three tabs. We're not going to use class notebook. We're not going to use assignments, although we will have assignments. We're not going to use this assignments tab in Microsoft Teams. We're not going to use grades in Microsoft Teams. You're going to receive a grade but we're not going to use these options here. OK, I'll explain later today what we're going to do instead. What we are going to talk about and what we are going to use today and this semester are Flipgrid, ClickUp. All right, these are the other two technologies. Microsoft Teams is going to be one. Flipgrid is going to be another. OK, so I'm going to open up Flipgrid. Now Flipgrid, we're going to come back to this because I want to talk about uh, the syllabus here in a few minutes. But Flipgrid basically is a way to share videos. And since this is a listening and speaking class, I think this is going to be really helpful for us to have conversations back and forth online but asynchronously. Asynchronously, it means over time. So I leave a message, you come back and you respond later, and then I come back and I respond to you later. This is the type of communication that we can have using this platform, all through videos, okay? So we're ha we'll use a lot of videos. You're gonna create a lot of videos this semester, talking and practicing uh, speaking, since a lot of what communication is, is visual. There's a lot of nonverbal communication uh, that, we, that we use when we communicate with each other. So Flipgrid, we'll use that. And today we'll talk about ClickUp. Now ClickUp is basically gonna be an organizational tool where you can find out exactly what we're doing, when we're doing it, and it's just a way for me to organize what we're going to do and for you to also organize and know what's coming up, what have we done in the past, and so on. We'll talk about ClickUp a little bit more uh, later today. All right, so let's go to files. Now I'm going to open up the syllabus. And hopefully you'll be able to see, I don't know if I can move this box out of the way. It's a little disturbing here. What the... It's kind of jumping around here. It's not, do... uh, there we go. All right. So let's see if I can 
Make this a little bit bigger. All right, can everybody see the syllabus on my screen? Yes. 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 Great. Yes. Great. Yes. All right, so our class is Comprensión Auditiva y Conversación Uno. All right, and you'll notice todos sus programas están en español. El primer semestre de PROPE siempre vienen así, todo en español. A partir del próximo semestre, cuando ustedes entran en la segunda semestre de la carrera de PROPE, pues todo viene en, en español. All right, so here we have the general description. Any volunteers to read the general description? En español. Bueno, yo. Ok. Materia de tipo práctico que se enfoca en las estrategias para desarrollar las habilidades de comprensión auditiva y conversación desde un nivel introductorio a un nivel A2 del marco común europeo para mejorar la comunicación en inglés. Esta materia apoya en el desarrollo de diferentes características del idioma para fortalecer, no, para favorecer las otras habilidades. Comprensión lectora, expresión escrita y uso de gramática y vocabulario desde una perspectiva comunicativa. Esta materia es simultánea a gramática en contexto 1, lectura 1, escritura 1 e integración de habilidades la, a través de la cultura 1 y es antecedente de todas las materias de propedéutico 2. Apoya las materias del área de desarrollo de habilidades para la comunicación de inglés, en inglés. Muy bien, thank you very much. Um, this, it's very important. En este curso vamos a hablar mucho de estrategias como maneras que pueden este, mejorar tu comprensión auditiva y tu conversación, la manera que estás hablando en, en inglés. Este, también vamos a incluir todas las habilidades, claro, vamos a enfocar más en lo que es um, speaking y conversación, vamos a, es el enfoque, pero es a través de eh, haciendo todo, implementando todas las habilidades. Also, this class is going to help you in your other classes in PROPE, your grammar class, uh, your reading and writing classes. You're going to have a, uh, a, a culture class where you can also use and implement all of your, uh, your skills. Okay, but the idea here is that all the classes help complement each other uh, in this semester as well as next semester this one year of uh, uh, focusing on your skills. So it's really important to try to find opportunities to practice speaking as much as you can this year, especially, right? Not only in our class, but if you have family, if you have friends that speak English that are outside of the school and you have opportunities to practice, I really encourage you to really take advantage as much as possible uh, so that you are practicing as much as, as you can. Okay? Speak is like any other skill. It just takes practice. Right? It's not magic. It's not just going to happen. It, it, it comes from practice and using it and not being afraid to uh, speak. Uh, English, right? different context. All right, uh, any volunteers for reading the general objective, please? Yes, I do. Okay. Me. Okay, go go right ahead. Uh, I think it was that Fernando. Okay. Al finalizar el curso, el estudiante habrá desarrollado las habilidades auditivas y verbales que le permitan interactuar de manera efectiva y apropiada en el idioma inglés a un nivel A2 más del MCER, con una actitud al aprendizaje continuo, reflexivo, con calidad y pluralismo. All right, thank you, uh, Fernando. The, um, the MCER, this is the Common European Framework. And if you're not familiar with the Common European Framework, 
This is basically a standard for uh, learning English as an additional language. OK, so if you're interested, you want to learn more. This is the common European framework where they use a scale. In this case, A1, A2. All right, so this is basically the description for the level that we are considering for this class. OK, when you guys get into the first semester of the BA. Right, your objective is to reach a B1 English proficiency level, which would represent these descriptions found here. OK, so this is what they're what we're talking about here when we're talking. Uh, we're using this A1, A2. If you're like, well, what does that mean? Uh, this is what it means, and it comes from the Common European Framework. OK, and you can get some more information about that online if you have uh, some questions about that. But that's what this A2 means. All right, we're trying to work and help you guys achieve an A2 level uh, this semester and next semester. Also, it's very important the attitude, right? The really the attitude that we have about continuous learning. All of us have different skills and strengths and weaknesses. And it's really important that we work together as a community, all of us helping each other with all our, our strengths and weaknesses. And so this is why I want you to feel like you can you have more uh, confidence when you speak in English, right? Because I know how it feels when I started speaking Spanish, especially the first year moving here in Mexico. I was really afraid and I felt silly and I, I was not very good and I'm still not great at speaking Spanish. But over time you get confidence and you feel more confident. And this is what our goals are here in this first semester, especially so that later you can go throughout the rest of the semester with the confidence and uh, the uh, the frame of mind to improve your English speaking skills. Now the contents, los contenidos de, de la materia. Está dividido entre cuatro unidades. La primera unidad está enfocado más en información personal. Entonces vamos a tener casos, por ejemplo, aquí dice saber qué y saber cómo. We're going to have opportunities to learn things, learn information about each of the contents, and also we're going to be learning how to do things. So each of these units are divided into different types of knowledge. OK, so information, personal information. We're going to talk about family and friends. What's it mean to have a true friend? Right. What does friendship actually mean? What does it mean to be a responsible family member? Right. We'll be talking about that, thinking about these deep questions about well, what's your role as a family member, especially now where we're adapting to a new way of life, right? And so what does that mean to you as a member of your own family? What does it mean now as a friend? Has it changed? We'll talk about that. Unit two, La, la Vida Universitaria. We'll talk about celebrities, and things that are popular these days, what makes something popular. We'll talk about different traditions and <clears throat> holidays, looking at different cultures. And one of my favorite topics, comida. We'll talk about that. What does it mean to fix a dish in a particular culture? What does it mean to like a type of food? How does that relate to different types of relationships that you've built throughout your life. We'll talk about that. In unit three, we'll talk about viajes, different trips, taking trips. We'll talk about entertainment and games and sports. Some of these topics you may have more interest in others, but throughout all of these topics, 
you're going to have some choice. You're going to be able to decide for yourself what specifically you want to discuss and what you want to talk about within these general topics. And the last unit, unit four, we'll talk about music and festivals. We'll talk about technology. Is technology always a good thing? Publicity in the world. We'll talk about that and the environment. How, to, how can we take care of the, uh, the planet Earth? All right. So these are the different topics that we'll talk about. Notice we have four units. Each unit is going to last around four weeks or 40 hours. And this is uh, these are the contents that we will be covering this semester. All right, uh, the methodology. Any brave volunteers to read, please, in Spanish, the methodology? Me. Thank you. Go right ahead. Um, la metodología del curso se centrará en el alumno, así como en la práctica de habilidades orales. Ah, ya se quitó. Sorry. No, así como. A ver. <laughs> Sorry about that. One second here. And you were doing so well, too. All right, go, go right ahead. You can pick up where you left off. <laughs> eh, la metodología del curso se centrará en el alumno, así como en la práctica de habilidades orales y auditivas del idioma inglés en, indif en diferentes contextos. Se alentará al alumno a explorar sistemáticamente la creatividad personal y la flexibilidad dentro del proceso de aprendizaje a través de la reflexión personal basada en experiencias previas, eligiendo el contenido del curso relevante, decidiendo los procesos de aprendizaje para lograr su objetivo. Eligiendo entre diferentes productos para hacer y eligiendo que espacios en línea se, ¿qué? ¿Qué, qué? Sí, se alineen con las preferencias de aprendizaje de uno. El papel del instructor seguirá siendo fluido entre un líder didáctico, un facilitador y un entrenador, dependiendo de cuál sea la transición más apropiada al alumno de ser dependiente a independiente para volverse más independiente a lo largo de la experiencia educativa. Durante el curso se promoverá el desarrollo de estrategias de aprendizaje a través de técnicas de enseñanza, de enseñanza orales y auditivas, tales como discusiones, presentaciones, debates, conversaciones, role plays, and dictoclus procedures, mm -hmm. empleando sí. diversidad de interacciones, materiales auténticos. Los alumnos tendrán la oportunidad de trabajar individualmente a través del aprendizaje autónomo en parejas y en grupos mediante el uso de tecnologías apropiadas diseñadas para facilitar los procesos de enseñanza y aprendizaje sincrónicos y asincrónicos. All right, great. Thank you for reading that. Yeah, a lot of, lot of stuff here. Main points. En esta clase hay, va a ser muy, este, mucha flexibilidad, bueno, muy flexi flexible en la manera que ustedes están participando. Yo siempre... Mmm, Prefiero dar mucha flexibilidad dentro de la enseñanza y el aprendizaje de, de, de mis materias. Pero dependiendo en cada uno de ustedes, dependiendo de lo que estamos haciendo, ¿verdad? Tal vez ustedes van a decir, no, pues no entiendo o no sé cómo decidir. So my job is to try to help you with becoming more dependent or more in, interdependent so that you can learn to help others as well as helping yourself. Since we're going into the teaching profession, that's what we do, right? We're trying to get into a profession where we can help others achieve their goals. And that's my job, is to try to help you achieve your goals, both within the class context, but also your personal goals in terms of what you want to achieve as an English language learner, as a speaker, of the English language. So there may be times where you're like, pues no entiendo, nada más dime lo que tengo que hacer. All right, and if that's the case, then I'll tell you, I'll say, okay, try this. You can do this, you can do this. Hay otras que dicen, no, pues yo quiero decidir, yo quiero hacer este. 
o yo quiero proponer una manera, una forma de trabajar, that's fine too. I encourage you to explore that flexibility. Maybe you're not used to that flexibility prior. Maybe you are, and hopefully you are. But that's the, the methodology of this course. It's going to be different for different um, students, different. Uh, each one of you might have a slightly different approach to how you'd like to learn. So that's what I want to explore this semester with each of you is to find the process, find the way that works best for you. So it's really important. You're going to have a lot of opportunities to give me feedback about how you feel about the course, how you either like the course or if there's some things that you find challenging or difficult or confusing. So I want to make sure that we have very close uh, forms of communication so that you can give me feedback about how you're doing uh, in my class. Okay, and so the methodology here is designed to express that flexibility and the different strategies and ways that we will be working. We'll be participating in discussions. You'll give presentations. We'll have debates. We'll have role plays. We'll talk later about dictogloss procedures and what that is. It's just different ways of interacting with each other and interacting with the course content. All righty. Moving on. Didactic uh, materials. The, the didactic materials, well, most of them are technologically related since we're all online. There are no books for the class, but we're going to be using Microsoft Teams, Flipgrid. Um, OneNote we'll come back to. Uh, OneDrive we'll talk about as well a little bit later today. We'll look at Realia materials, YouTube videos, TED, uh, TED Ed, and also just other websites. Okay, so again, most all of the content will be found online, and some of the content we're going to create ourselves. All right. Now the valuation, the assessment. OK, this is how you're going to be graded for the class. We're going to have activities throughout the week. Those activities will make up 20 percent of your total grade. We'll also have these mini exams that are uh, designed to help you practice your listening comprehension. All right, so we'll have those. That's going to be 40 percent of the grade. And we'll have projects for each unit that will make up the remaining 40%. All right, so we're going to have basically three categories of assignments throughout the course that are going to make up how you're going to uh, be graded. Now, speaking of grades, I think yesterday or day before yesterday, I sent out emails to each of you inviting you to join teacher ease or to to sign in to teacher ease now teacher ease is going to be our grade book for the class and it's also going to be how you can track your attendance this is how i'm going to keep track of your grades and your attendance so teacher ease is going to be how you can access your grades so that you know throughout the semester exactly how you're doing in the class. All right, so try today. If you haven't already, make sure that you try to sign in to teacher ease. I think the first time that you sign in, you have to create a password. You have to make up a password, um, but try to enter into teacher ease. And if you have any questions or doubts about teacher ease, send me an email today or send me a chat. And uh, if if we need to get together outside of class, if you have issues about how to access teacher ease, we can do that. But uh, do make sure by next class tomorrow, uh, you know how to get into teacher ease. Again, it's very important to me 
And I think it's important, should be important to you that you're able to know exactly what grades that you're receiving uh, for this class. Okay, and Teacher Ease is going to be our, our grade book. So make sure, double check, and make sure that you can get into your university email. If anybody is having issues about getting into your university email, then please ask. Send me a message. If we have to, I'll set up another time outside of class to help those who are having problems getting into Microsoft 365. But remember that Microsoft 365 is the main platform for the university. Each of you is going to have your own username. It'll be AL, then your ID, right? At edu.ua.mx. And go into Outlook. And this is where you access your email for the university. All the emails that I send you are going to go through this uh, email service. Okay. All right. Uh, notes under the assessment. Uh, using English will make up 100% of your grade, of course. And there's a note here. I'm going to upload periodically throughout the semester to ASEMA also your grades. Now, uh, sometimes there's confusion about the grades that I upload in ASEMA. The grades that I upload in ASEMA are going to be the grades at that time. And so the, the main thing is to, I would pay closer mm -hmm. attention to the grades in teacher ease. All right. I'm required to also upload to ASEMA, and I'm going to do that every couple of weeks. But they're going to be the same grades that you're going to receive in teacher ease. OK, so um, the ASEMA grades are just going to be the grades at that moment. They're not going to be averaged. It's just going to be whatever the grade is at that time. When I uploaded it to ASEMA, that's that's what the grade's going to be. All right, so uh, you're going to be able to access your grades through ASEMA and also, also Teacher Ease. But again, Teacher Ease is going to be more current and more accurate since we're going to be having assignments uh, throughout uh, the semester. The last note here, APA doesn't apply to us at this point. Um, there may be some presentations where I'll ask you to include reference, but Mm, probably this semester we this won't really apply uh, too much for us uh, since we're going to focus more on conversational English. And then we have our references. Okay, these are going to be the references that you can use. Some of the I think more important re references. One of the most important reference I think here is dictionary.reference.com. Now, uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and see if I can get back to our main page. OK, um, I don't know if you can see my phone. I'm going to try to show you one of my favorite apps. Now, I know some of you, uh, depending on the type of phone you have, you may have limitations on how many apps you can install on your phone. Pero ahorita quiero hablar un poco de las aplicaciones que yo pienso que son muy importantes. Si se puede agregar a sus celulares, que creo que te, te sirve mucho este semestre. Bueno, la primera aplicación, obviamente, Microsoft Teams. Ok, entonces, tal vez usted, algunos de ustedes ya, ya están accesando esta reunión a través de, de su celular. También, obviamente, pueden accesarlo a su, de, su, de tu escritorio. También se puede. Es como ustedes quieren, puede ser. Los dos formas, pero creo que es muy importante tener el app de Teams porque desde ahí pueden recibir mensajes, pueden mandarme mensajes este, más fácil, pienso yo. Entonces, si se puede agregar Teams a su celular, creo que es, vale la pena. Otra app se llama Flipgrid. 
No sé si, creo que no, no va, bueno, es, es demasiado chiquito. Ok, Flipgrid. Um, Flipgrid también creo que es otra app que, que hay que instalarlo porque muchas de las actividades lo que vamos a uh, hacer es con Flipgrid con su celular. Entonces, si ustedes quieren instalarlo, igual si quieren ahorita, pues le, le doy pues, algunos minutos ahorita instalarlo, encontrarlo, voy a abrir el chat y voy a copiar y pegar la liga a la página, pero con su celular, si nada más ponen Flip Grid, pues van a encontrar el app Flip Grid. Pueden accesarlo a través de tu escritorio, pero te digo, creo que es más fácil, más útil, instalándolo en su celular. Y luego voy a mandarles la liga de nuestro grupo. Tengo un grupo en Flipgrid donde vamos a trabajar todo el semestre. Entonces, ahorita les mando a través del chat la liga a este grupo. Okay, entonces, ahí está la liga al grupo y también el nombre Flipgrid. Si quieren entrar de una vez, pues mínimo instalarlo en su celular. Y se ve más o menos así. Y hay un grupo que dice Listening and Speaking. ¿Qué dice? Listening Speaking 1. Se ve más o menos así. Si das un clic... Vas a entrar así más o menos, así con una imagen padre. Y ya desde ahí abajo ya vienen información con la misma actividad. Bueno, la primera actividad. Ok, entonces. Si quieren intentarlo. Si, si tienen algunas este, dudas, pues me dicen de una vez. Si tienen dudas, preguntas. Todos pueden encontrar el app en su celular. Sí, ya la encontré. Okay. ¿Alguien tiene algunas dudas sobre instalando Flipgrid en su celular o instalando Microsoft Teams? Creo que son los dos principales para esta materia. Um, hay otras apps que también tal vez puede ser útil. Um, yo, yo solo tengo problemas con Flipgrid. Ajá. Um, dice que enter join code y lo dice go o scan flipgrid QR. Ok, a ver. Mm. Ok, voy a poner un uh, código 
A ver, a ver si con este pueden entrar. A ver. Thank you. Ok. You try this eight one. Seven, eight. Ok. Si piden un código, si quieren entrar, entrar con este, a ver si se puede. Igual voy a copiar y pegar la liga al grupo en Microsoft Teams en publicaciones. Yo ya pude. Sí se puede con ese el código. Sí se puede. ¿Sí? Ah, ok. Muy bien. Okay, anybody else have any issues about getting into Flipgrid or installing Microsoft Teams on your cell phone? I'm curious, guys, I'm going into the chats. Um, quiero saber si actualmente en esta reunión en línea, este, si están utilizando un cel su celular o un escritorio. Si, si pueden indicar uno u otro, si están utilizando un cell phone o un escritorio, nada más para saber. I'm using a laptop. Laptop, ok. Yo estoy en laptop. Laptop, ok. Yo también estoy en laptop. Muy Yo bien. También estoy en el laptop. Yo también en laptop. Perfecto. Yo también más... estoy en laptop. Ok. Parece que la mayoría son en el escritorio. Muy bien. O laptop o desktop. Y puede ser, nada más estoy mencionando este de su celular que es una opción en caso que sí es necesario. Si están afuera de su casa a las 8 de la mañana y quieren entrar, pues también se puede. Ok. Y, y sobre el app en, en el celular, creo que es más fácil igual para recibir y mandar mensajes. Pero es como ustedes quieren. Ustedes deciden la forma que quieren este, trabajar. Nada más quiero darles así como opciones, ¿verdad? Para que ustedes deciden cómo, cómo quieren, prefieren a participar. Muy bien. All right. Thank you guys for sharing that. Now... Um, let's go to Voy a compartir mi pantalla. Let's go back to Teams. Ok, voy a entrar en Teams. Si ustedes quieren hacer la misma en, en publicaciones o en post en inglés. Aquí voy a compartir una liga a un cuestionario. Es información que me sirve para saber más o menos este, eh, qué tipo de tecnología tienen ustedes, eh, cómo sienten ahorita sobre su propio desarrollo de inglés. Es información que me sirve mucho para comenzar, para conocerles un poco más. Y hay una pregunta ahí, todos en inglés, entonces igual voy a estar aquí si tengan algunas dudas sobre qué significa una pregunta. Pero la información, hay una pregunta hasta el final que estoy pidiendo 
Eh, si me dan permiso a pasar esta información a los otros maestros de la carrera. Entonces, ustedes pueden decir, no, es nada más para que yo sé esta información o si, si están de acuerdo a pasar esta información a otros maestros. Hay otra pregunta que estoy pidiendo, si me dan permiso a compartir esta información eh, a, a, por ejemplo, si yo voy a una conferencia o algo así, si ustedes me dan este permiso a, a, a pasar este, esta información a otras personas. En este caso sería sin sus nombres, no voy a compartir nada de sus nombres de la información. Si ustedes pueden decir que sí o que no, en, ah. es como ustedes quieren, pero estoy solicitando esta información y ustedes me dicen si me dan permiso o no. Y entonces ahorita voy a compartir una liga a este, este cuestionario. Creo que va a tardar 10, 15 minutos. Voy a estar aquí, seguimos con la clase, pero eh, si tengan algunas dudas sobre qué significa una pregunta, eh, me, me dicen. Entonces ahorita voy a compartir este, esta liga. Maestro, yo tengo una duda. Sí. Este, he estado ingresando a Flipgrid y no me deja. No, ya no se pudo. Ok, ¿y qué, qué dice? Ay, me, me mar, no sé si te marca un error o algo. Sí, es que, bueno, aquí lo tengo en la laptop y me dice que me aparece como una bienvenida. Y me dice que ponga... ¿Un ID o, o un usuario? ¿Mande? Sí, la, eh, para Flipgrid ustedes pueden usar la misma usuario de Office. De hecho, tienes que, tienes que utilizar eh, su correo de Microsoft 365 para entrar en Flipgrid. Entonces, yo tengo, estoy utilizando como un tipo de cuenta universitaria para que simplificar un poco de pues, este proceso. Entonces, ustedes pueden utilizar el mismo usuario de Microsoft 365. ¿Qué le pongo en donde dice? Es que yo le puse universidad o colegio. Pero no, ah, entonces por eso. No sé si pregunta primero si estás como maestro o alumno. Sí, le puse como alumno. Ok, en, ¿y luego qué dice? Y dice la región, le puse México. Y el grado, yo le puse universidad o colegio. Y cuando pongo mi, mi fecha de nacimiento, dice que no, que debo de tener 18 años. Entonces pongo high school. A ver, no sé si alguien, si, si pasó algo, si pasó la misma a otra persona. Eh, a mí me pasó lo mismo, pero pues, puse universidad. Mm, ah, ya, 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 es que eh, tienes que meter el código eh, al inicio. Te pide que entres al código o que pongas como tu nombre de usuario, que entres por tu nombre de... Uh, ¿Y, ¿Y cuál es el código? Como si fueras... Tu parte. Tu parte. 7178. Ese es el código. Igual... Uh, 8178. es el que tienes que poner al inicio, no tu, no tu correo. O sea, te pide primero el código y luego ya el correo. ¿El código es 8178 o también se le tiene que poner lo demás? El nombre. Creo que ahí viene completo Stuart 8178. A mí no me pide el código. All right, guys, so I've, got, I've went ahead and included the link, so I'm going to give you guys a few minutes 
to both try to get into Flipgrid, try to install Teams on your phone, and complete the online uh, questionnaire. If anybody has questions or problems accessing the questionnaire, let me know. I'll be here online. Uh, and we'll come back and I'll give you about 10, 15 minutes, however much time we need to complete the online questionnaire. Okay, so go ahead and uh, begin that uh, right now, please. Hello and welcome to Listening and Speaking One for Probate One this fall semester 2020. Oigan, yo ya me trabé. Ahora, ¿qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? Las preguntas que decíamos del grupo son las que tenemos que responder, ¿no? Ah, ¿cuáles? ¿O qué dijo que hiciéramos? Ok. So, ahorita, la primera cosa es tratar de entrar en Flipgrid. Ahorita no tiene que hacer ninguna actividad en Flipgrid. Es nada más para que ustedes puedan accesar al grupo de Flipgrid donde vamos a trabajar todo el semestre. Entonces, para ahorita, o hasta ahorita, nada más eh, si pueden instalar Flipgrid, el app, en su celular. Y si pueden accesar, nada más que si pueden accesar al grupo, hasta ahí. La segunda parte ahora es entrar en Teams, en publicaciones. Compartí un, una liga a una, un cuestionario y Ajá. quiero darles ahorita tiempo para contestar este cuestionario. Es nada más para darme un poco de información en general sobre el uso de tecnología de ustedes y también algunas preguntas sobre cómo sientes ahorita eh, en cuestiones de, de su inglés. No, pues Entonces, ya. ahorita nada más son estas dos actividades hasta ahorita. Okay. Ah, ok. Um, la que dice en Microsoft Teams es um, lo de Microsoft Forms. Correcto, oh. así es. Ok, gracias. De nada. Igual, cualquier duda me, me dicen, guys, if you have any questions. Teacher. Sí. Entonces, nada más eh, tenemos que insertar el código. Bueno, ya me metí a Flickrip. Y introducí el código y me apareció, bueno, una imagen de un bosque, unas preguntas y un video. Entonces, nada más. Entonces, sí, ahorita no tiene que hacer la, la actividad. No, no tienes que. Ahorita, un poco más tarde vamos a hacerlo, pero ahorita nada más. El primer paso fue a uh, que ustedes pueden accesarlo. Entonces, ahorita no tienes que uh, contestar las preguntas. Y yo prefiero primero hacer este cuestionario. Y. Y luego voy a darles tiempo para hacer la actividad en Flipgrid, pero ahorita no. De acuerdo. Gracias. De nada. Uh, profesor, yo me perdí un poco. Uh, nos mandó como otras preguntas eh, como para checar nuestro inglés o algo así. Pero ¿en dónde nos los mandó esas preguntas? El, ¿Estás hablando del cuestionario? No. Es una, es una forma en línea, es un cuestionario eh, en línea. Eh, compartí una liga en Microsoft Teams. Igual voy a compartir mi pantalla a ver, enseñarles dónde. Y, entonces, si entran en Microsoft Teams, en publicaciones o post, aquí abajo... Um, A ver. Creo. A ver. No a ver. Ok. Qué raro. Ah, aquí está. Dice... 
No sé si, si puedes ver mi pantalla, pero, pero aquí dice, sí. hay una liga, a una forma, se llama Getting to Know You. Aquí desde ahí pues, hay algunas preguntas y hasta abajo una manera a mandar los este, resultados. Se llama Submit en inglés, no sé cómo vienen en, en español. Y cuando termines con todas estas preguntas, hay un botón hasta abajo para mandar los resultados. Teacher, what is broadband internet? Ah, okay, broadband, uh, it's, it's, it's basically just uh, internet service. Mm, broadband is un tipo de conexión que ofrece un poco este, como eh, velocidades más rápidos, pero creo que casi todos son de, de broadband, pero es básicamente, pues, este, internet, ¿verdad? Ok, so, si a veces tenemos problemas con el Wi-Fi, le ponemos que no. Uh, ¿Cuál pregunta era, perdón? Number six. Ok. Ok, so aquí es básicamente, eh, ¿tienes servicio okay. internet o no? Si quieres eliminar el, la palabra broadband, es básicamente oh. eh, si ten, tienes o no. Hay otras preguntas sobre qué, qué tan este, constante es el, el servicio, ¿verdad? Pero eso es nada más si lo tienen o no en, de su casa. Oh, ok. Sí. Thank you. You're welcome. Teacher, I have a question. Yes, go uh, go ahead. What what does what do you go by means? Um, okay, I so what do you go by means like um, for example, my name is Benjamin, but I go by Ben, or maybe I go by Benjas, or maybe I go by Mean, right? Who? What All name right. do you you do other people refer to you, or which name do you prefer that other people uh, refer to you? Now, in this case, I'm asking all of you to tell me which name that you would like for me to refer to you as. Some of you like your first name. Some of you like your second first name, your middle name. Some of you may even want me to call you a different name. So, whatever whatever name that you feel that comfortable. And how you want me to reply to you, that's what that question is about. Okay, thanks so much. You're welcome. Teacher. Yes. It's like a nickname. It, it could be a nickname. It could be, right? It's it's just what name do you want me to refer to you as? Like for me in this class, and this is something. I think cultural, since I'm a, an American, I'm not used to other t other students, even still. I've been teaching for 15 years at the university, and I'm still not used to students calling me teacher, right? Because in the United States, only like if you're really, really little, and maybe you call your teacher teacher, right? Um, I'm not used to that, but I understand that it's different here in Mexico, but I would prefer that all of you call me either Benjamin or Ben, call me by my first name, 
Um, and that's how I would prefer all of you to call me as your instructor, right? To keep it as informal as possible. Um, and so I'm asking you the same question. What name do you want me to call you? Maybe it's a nickname. If that's what you want me to call you, then I'll call you uh, by your nickname. All right. Oh, yes. When you guys finish your uh, questionnaire and you finished, uh, you were able to successfully find Flipgrid. If you could in the chat, just leave a message saying I've completed or I finished the survey. Just some note uh, letting me know that you finished uh, this task. I'll give you a few more minutes to to complete it. Mientras, como estamos esperando, quiero eh, decirles la manera que voy a como pasar la lista. Eh, hay una manera eh, a través de Teams donde yo puedo descargar automáticamente de, del chat un hoja de Excel con todos sus nombres, con todos le, los tiempos cuando entraste, saliste, saliste si ustedes tienen que uh, salir o no sé, vamos a suponer que hubo problemas con su conexión y desconectado, eh, no sé, que está desconectada su, su servicio, ustedes pueden obviamente intentarlo, tratar de uh, uh, entrar después, ¿ok? Y, y no, va, no va a afectar su asistencia, ¿ok? El, de lo que estoy pidiendo que ustedes cada día está en estas sesiones, todos los días, entre 8 a 9.40, vamos a juntar exactamente como estamos haciendo aquí a través de Teams, a menos que hay, hay problemas. Pero hasta ahorita vamos a utilizar Teams. Este, este eh, reunión ya está programada para todo el semestre. Entonces, seguimos así. A las 8 punto, voy a comenzar con las actividades. Ustedes entran. Y este cuenta como asistencia. Eh, espero, obviamente, que estás aquí toda la, la, la clase, pero si pasa en algo y pues no hay, no, no va a afectar su asistencia. Ok, eso es por cuestiones de asistencia. Y entonces, eh, pues sí, pero, eh, nada más cualquier duda que tienen, si, si ustedes tienen problemas o preguntas sobre esta plataforma, pues me dicen, me dicen que cualquier cosa que, que, que tienen. Cuando terminen, porfa, si puede dar un mensaje ahí, porfa, en el chat. Teacher. Sí. Eh, yo no puedo entrar a la página que nos dio ahorita de Flip. Me dice que está mal mi correo. Y estás utilizando el correo de la universidad, ¿verdad? Sí. Ok. Um, a ver, ¿y qué? ¿Nada más dice que está mal o qué? Sí, me indica que intente más tarde. ¿Intentaste con su celular o con...? Con el celular. Ok, ¿puedes intentarlo con un, una computadora? Puede ser después, igual, este. O, okay. o si quieres, este, ¿quién, perdón, quién está hablando? Carla. Carla. Ok, Carla. Um, no sé si después de la clase hoy tienes chance, 
pues lo, lo checamos. A ver. Sí. sí. O, o si no, puede ser en la tarde. Pues lo, lo vemos. Ajá. Ok. Ah. Tú me dices, este, me dices si tienes chance ahorita cuando termina, terminamos la clase de hoy, lo, lo vemos. De hecho, sí. para todos, cualquier de ustedes, si tengan dudas, vamos a terminar más o menos en como 20, 25 minutos más o menos. 20 minutos y pues lo, lo vemos. Ok. Teacher, ¿Sí? otra pregunta. Sí. Este, ¿Por medio del chat puedo eh, comentarle mis dudas? Claro que sí, claro. Mm. Sí. ¿Y sabes cómo entrar en el chat? No. Ok. Voy a compartir mi pantalla. Uh -huh. Y aquí estoy en la plataforma de nosotros, Listening Speaking. ¿Sí lo ves? Sí. Ok. Eh, aquí no voy a dar un clic porque pues tengo algunos chats de otras personas, pero si das un clic ahí en chat, uh -huh. eh, ya va a aparecer este, pues la área donde puedes mandar a cualquier persona de tus compañeros o los maestros mensajes. Ok. Y si quieres intentarlo y ya desde ahí, si tengas dudas, pues lo, lo vemos. Pero... Uh -huh. Eh, voy a compartir, la verdad no me acuerdo bien si, si entras en mi nombre, si detecta, pues voy a poner mi nombre completa en aquí. Y, o con mi correo, dependiendo, la, es lo que no me acuerdo bien, si que necesitan la primera vez. Ya después la primera vez ya, aparecer, ya va a aparecer nuestro chat para que no... Va a ser más fácil, pero aquí es, aquí está mi correo. Pero sí les pido eh, que no me manden mensajes en general a mi, mi correo, okay, porque quiero mantener todos mi, mis mensajes de, de, con ustedes aquí mismo en Microsoft Teams. Aquí vivo todo el día y, y este sería más fácil y, y ustedes van a, a tener una respuesta más rápido si me mandas un chat en lugar de un correo, pero les comparto mi, mi correo de dos formas. ¿Ok? Gracias, teacher. De nada. Ok, guys. Looks like more of you have completed the task. Si todavía faltan, si no han terminado con el cuestionario, les pido para la próxima clase, si pueden terminarlo, obviamente cualquier duda que, ten, que tengan, pues me dicen. La primera semana es como normal para algunos, piensen, no, pues es mucho tecnología, no sé qué, qué estamos haciendo, y, y este es normal, yo entiendo, es, es algo nuevo, entonces... Lo único que lo que les pido es me, me preguntan. Puede ser en clase, obviamente, puede ser afuera de la clase, pero poco a poquito ya va a ser más fácil. Y creo yo, las tecnologías, lo que vamos a utilizar en esta clase, va a facilitar el proceso, lo que, lo que vamos a hacer. ¿no? Entonces, nada más les pido un poco paciencia. Igual yo voy a tener mucha paciencia con ustedes para apoyarles, adaptar. A, a los tecnologías lo que estamos utilizando. All right, my friends, one more thing, one last thing. Uh, the last activity, this is going to be our last activity for today. La última actividad para hoy es, les pido a entrar nuevamente en Flipgrid, igual de ustedes que tienen problemas, podemos verlo, pero quiero hacer la primera actividad de Introductions. Introductions. Now, in, in introductions, hay vienen algunas preguntas que, que les pido a, a respetar. Si pueden contestar las preguntas cuando está creando su video. Entonces, igual tienen preguntas de your oh. complete name and what name do you want me to go by, right? That you want me, me to refer to you as. Entonces, es muy similar de la pregunta lo que estaba en en el cuestionario. 
what do you like to make? What do you? Th what things do you like to do? Your hobbies, okay? Anything that you want to share, um, I would like for you to share in the video. The video is going to be short, all right? It's a really short video, but I would like for you to try to create the video um, in uh, in Flipgrid. Puede ser con su celular. Yo prefiero que intent se puede intentarlo con su celular y a ver si se puede. Y como estamos en clase ahorita, si quieres eh, salir del grupo, pues ya este sería la última actividad para hoy. Ya vamos a terminar hoy haciendo esta actividad. Entonces, si tiene que salir, eh, está bien por cuestiones de asistencia. Ya, ya, ya va, ya pasé la lista, ¿verdad? Y entonces no hay problema por eso. Voy a estar aquí en línea hasta 9.40 o más tarde, si, se, si es necesario, para, uh, para ustedes que tienen preguntas, dudas lo, sobre las actividades, lo que hicimos hoy. Ok, pero ya voy a terminar en el sentido de, pues ya voy a darles uh, pues tiempo para hacer la, primer, la próxima actividad contestando en Flipgrid. La actividad se llama Introductions en in inglés. Ok. And so, if you have to leave the class, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and stay here and uh, answer any questions. And I know if, if some of you are having issues with Flipgrid, we can look at those right now if we need to. Ok. So, Elizabeth, um, entrar en la aplicación un momento, poner mi. Okay, Elizabeth, did you try with the the key, the Stuart 81? Oh, what is the code now? I forgot myself. Mm, 81, 87, 78. 81, 78. Did you try using the code Stuart 81, 78, Elizabeth? I, I think that was a similar problem that someone else had, no? Um, I have one more question. Sure. Uh, do we have to record a uh, response or do we have to make like a, a, I don't know how to say it in English, uh, like a video call? No. Um, nos tenemos que gra no, grabar o. Oh, ¿Cómo es eso? ¿Cómo debemos responder sí. las preguntas? Ok, en, en el icono, a ver, voy a, voy a tratar de en, enseñar con mi celular. Ok, okay. Si, si lo ves aquí, pues ya vienen algunos textos, pero aquí, no. ahí abajo hay un icono con una cámara. Okay. Si le, le doy un clic, me da la opción a grabar este un mensaje entonces okay. eso es como funciona Flipgrid básicamente ustedes van a grabar y hay muchos efectos y otras cosas que igual si quieren hacer y luego si si, si quieren experimentar y no está bien pero mínimo lo más básico es este grabar eh, un mensaje en este caso, algunas introducciones, incluyendo las, las preguntas, lo que puse. Y, y hasta puedes regrabar hasta que ya estás contento de lo que ya lo tienes. Ya cuando estás listo, ya va a decir varios pasos para publicar tu video final. Y creo que puedes hacerlo todo a través de, de tu celular. De hecho, creo yo, es más fácil. Este app está diseñado... Eh, para, para usar eh, el celular. Ok. Ok, entonces intentarlo. Este, obviamente, la primera vez, pues trátalo y a ver qué, pues, a ver qué pasa. Okay. ¿Eh? Vale, muchas gracias. Okay. De nada. Teacher, entonces sí. solamente tenemos hasta las 9.40 para publicar el video. 
No, voy a dar hasta la próxima clase. Les pido que si pueden hacerla ahorita para que yo pueda pues, conocerlas este, antes de la próxima clase. Pero claro, si necesitas más tiempo, eh, si puede intentarlo, hacerlo pues, hoy, ¿verdad? la preferencia. Para ah, que... Okay. Ajá. No, por mí está bien, solo que como Wendy, por ejemplo, a veces sí nos pone como horario. Pensé que también aquí era igual, pero ok. No, en este caso, pues yo voy, sí, pues le, 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 pues lo voy a dejar así todo el día pues para hacer la, la actividad, no hay problema. Ok. Pero sí, traten de hacerlo hoy porque igual quiero ver si algunos de ustedes tengan problemas haciendo o entrando en Flipgrid también, ¿verdad? Teacher. Sí. I have a question. Uh -huh. If I have an iPhone, I can download the, the, the app. Sí, todo debería funcionar igualito a, a un iPhone entre Android. Okay. Sí. I have a question. Sí. Um, do we need like a notebook? Um, okay, and pero uh, es, es una buena pregunta, ¿eh? Es, sí, un notebook. Ok, so, um, una de las estrategias, lo que vamos a hacer, y luego pues voy a explicar un poco más profundo eso, es cómo algunas estrategias para escuchar pues, un audio o video. Y uno es el uso de pues, un cuaderno. Puede ser un cuaderno física, ¿Verdad? O puede ser algo electrónica dependiendo en los, eh, los devices, los aparatos que estás utilizando. Um, so, if you feel comfortable, if you feel more comfortable with a notebook, a real notebook, um, then I encourage you to, to get a notebook uh, for this class. If you want to use OneNote, OneNote igual podemos practicar más tarde, pero OneNote también sirve de, de la misma. Puede utilizar OneNote si, si quieres utilizar como un tipo cuaderno, pero electrónico. Pero es como ustedes deciden. Pero, por ejemplo, no hay especificaciones de cuadro grande, cuadro chico y todo eso. Nosotros no. lo dijimos. No, no. <coughs> y otra cosa que no mencioné es en no vamos a, en esta clase de listening and speaking con, conmigo, pues no vamos a utilizar la aula virtual, ¿ok? Tal vez todas las otras materias van a entrar y usar eh, aula virtual. Nosotros no vamos a utilizar aula virtual. All right, las, las tecnologías lo que practicamos hoy, Microsoft Teams, Flipgrid y eh, ClickUp, luego vamos a hablar más de ClickUp, esas tres va a servir como nuestra pues, plataforma para toda la clase en lugar de aula virtual. No vamos a utilizar aula virtual. No hay una necesidad para esta clase, listening and speaking, a entrar en aula virtual. Pero ojo, tal vez es diferente a, a otras materias. Entonces hay que checar bien los requisitos de cada maestro, de cada materia. Pero para nosotros no es necesario entrar en aula virtual, ¿ok? Ese es el aula virtual en, en la universidad, no, no vamos a usarlo. Vamos a vivir aquí en Microsoft Teams para, para este semestre. Ok, Doki. ¿Otras preguntas? Mm -hmm. Teacher, eh, la pregunta, la pregunta cuatro de de Flipgrid, ¿qué significa? No lo entiendo. A ver, ¿qué, qué era? Ah, ok. ¿Qué es la que Yes, what are you a maker of? This is a question. Um, eh, este habla de qué, qué, qué te gusta o qué puedes fabricar hacer, pero fabricar en el, en el caso de, mm, o crear, ¿qué puedes, cre qué, qué son los co tipos de cosas que quieres o le gusta crear, fabricar, hacer? 
¿verdad? Puede ser algo física, puede ser algo eh, intangible, como cosas como, I like to make friends, could be like that, right? Um, en cualquier sentido de verbos como hacer, fabricar, crear, ¿verdad? Ustedes pueden este, mencionar usar este tipo de verbos. Ah, ok. Gracias. De nada. Todos ustedes pueden hacer, fabricar, crear algo. ¿Qué, qué es el más como representante eh, de, de cada uno de ustedes? Es lo que se trata en este, esta pregunta. Igual eh, quiero mencionar todas las clases, si todo funciona bien, voy, voy a intentar a grabar todas las sesiones, lo que estamos haciendo. Por ejemplo, ahorita esta sesión, el primer día de clase, estoy tratando de grabarlo eh, porque yo quiero tener una grabación de todo lo que estamos haciendo cada día. Especialmente para esta clase de Listening and Speaking, si hay algo pasó que que estábamos explicando algo o no recuerdas o, o, o quieres repasarlo otra vez, eh, puedes regresar la, la grabación para ver qué pasó, qué dijo, ¿verdad? Y entonces es para igual ustedes, igual es para mí también para evaluar cómo vamos y, y cosas así. Entonces yo también, yo lo uso este para, para reflexionar en lo que yo estoy haciendo como su, su maestro, ¿no? Entonces, cada día voy a intentarlo, si, si no pasa algo con la tecnología, mi intención es tener una grabación de todas las clases, lo que estamos haciendo. Right? Entonces, igual si falta en clase, que espero que no, si, si tienes que faltar una, una clase, pues siempre va a tener una grabación eh, que está, que donde ustedes pueden accesarlo. Igual voy a, a estar aquí para cualquier duda, cualquier pregunta. Si ustedes tienen que salir para hacer la actividad, adelante, no hay ningún problema. Si, si vas a hacerlo en su celular y quiere quedar aquí en la clase también, está bien. Recuerden que ustedes pueden hablarme pues, de Ben o Benjamín. ¿verdad? Es muy informal, no es necesario hacer así muy, para mí es formal diciendo teacher, pero es como ustedes, uh, como ustedes quieren, however you feel comfortable referring to me as, it's up to you. Looks like we have 40 of you here in online. And... Um, I'm assuming everyone is on my list. If if anybody knows someone who tried to get in that couldn't get in, please let me know. Um, so I want to make sure I have everybody on my list. Also, if you haven't already, uh, please upload an image of your face Uh, to your profile in Microsoft Teams. I see many of you've done that. Maria Fernanda has done that. Adan, Fernando, these are ones that I, I see right now. Cecilia, Luis Enrique, right? So that's great. You've got some really good pictures of yourself. Please, if you have not done so already, please go ahead also to upload an image of your face to Microsoft Teams. Uh, 365. It's basically going to be your profile for Office 365 that will appear 
everywhere, basically, in all of the apps in Office 365. If anybody has questions about any of the apps in Office 365, let me know. If you have any questions about how to use OneDrive, if you have any questions about how to use OneNote, okay, let me know. No, I don't have questions. Okay, great. I do. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the question, well, it's not a question, but where it says, uh, state your name and what you go by. Right. Uh, what is go by? Like, all right, so what go by is, I'm going to give you an example. So my name is. Uh, Benjamin, my name is Benjamin Stewart. You can call me Ben. All right, so Ben would be the name that I go by. Ben would be the name that oh, I okay. prefer other people to call me. Now, some students, you know, they have uh, two first names. They have a first name and then they have a second name. So, um, you know, some of you like your first name better than your second name. Some of you might like your second name better than your first name. So maybe you want me to call you by your second name. Maybe you have even a different name completely, a nickname that you want me to call you. So this is about first sharing us, sharing with uh, to us your full name and then the name that you would like uh, others and, and myself to, to call you. This is very informal. So in my case, you don't have to refer to me as teacher. You can call me Ben, you can call me Benjamin. Um, you can, if you want to call me teacher, that's fine. But um, this is what this question is about is how do you want your, your friends and in this case me uh, to refer to you as how do you feel comfortable uh, be, uh, being, you know, which name do you feel comfortable with? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yes, um, make sure that the uh, the recording needs to be in uh, English also, please. Um, this is going to be our first speaking activity. So I would like that, um, you know, any video that I ask you to complete will be done in uh, English. And during the class, I'll be speaking more and more in English just so that we become more familiar, you that you become familiar with my voice, that you get used to listening in English as soon as possible. Okay, so yes, please make sure the recording is uh, in English. Uh, Carlos, I don't know if you're still here. I'm just looking at your question. How can I answer the questions on the app? Uh, let me know if you still have questions. I'm not sure if if I was able to answer your question. Uh, teacher. Yes, go ahead. Uh, in question in question number five, what is the meaning of what are some challenges you you face as we begin the semester? Okay, so um, if if you if you want to share any uh, challenges like let's say uh, maybe the internet connection is a challenge, uh, maybe it's uh, something that. Um, maybe it's related to English, speaking in English, or maybe um, any, anything that you feel comfortable sharing that you uh, want to share about it, something that might be a challenge uh, for you during this class, anything that you want to share with that. Um, if you feel like you have no challenges, then you don't have to include that. 
but if you want to share any, uh, that's uh, that's what that question is about. OK, so it might be related to technology. It might be related to your speaking and proficiency. OK, thanks. OK, you're welcome. Some of you might work. I mean, I don't know if that's the case now. <clears throat> Maybe that's a challenge if you are working and also going to school. That could be a challenge. It might even be a challenge finding a quiet place in your house to get online. Maybe that's a challenge. Profe, entonces podemos colgar para poder hacer todo lo de la actividad. Claro, claro que sí. De hecho, ya vamos a terminar. Voy a tratar de terminar en, en este tiempo, 9.40 cada día. Vamos a comenzar a las 8. De hecho, voy a entrar un poco, como 5 minutos antes para, para comenzar a las 8 cada día. Y entonces ya vamos a terminar con, con la clase. Voy a estar aquí. Si cualquier duda que, ten, que tienen, pues me dicen. Pero sería hasta mañana. Vamos a comenzar con la, la próxima clase mañana a las 8, igual en Microsoft Teams, como hicimos hoy. Si no han terminado con la actividad en Flipgrid, por favor, si pueden terminarlo para la próxima clase, para que yo pueda conocerlas ustedes este, para saber un poco más. Igual el cuestionario. Si no hubo chance de terminarlo, por favor, si puede intentarlo antes de la próxima clase. Y, y ya, pues ya creo que vamos a terminar para hoy. Algunas dudas, preguntas sobre las actividades de hoy. No, pero gracias. No. Okay, guys, thank you. Enjoy gracias. the rest of your day, guys. I look forward to having all of you in class, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow at eight o'clock. Okay, take care. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.